every man needs her off his offset <laughs> <laughs> and we are live 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 <laughs> welcome in welcome in welcome in we are live with the shrine of ma'at we have our shrine elder baba haru Ankh Ra Samaj Se Pata. When you come on in, let me know where you are coming in from. <laughs> where are you? I am in the great city of New York. I'm in New York City, baby. Born and raised, Hartford, Connecticut, living in New York City. We have our shrine elder, a pillar of the community and founder of so much for so many. So come on in and let me know where you're coming in from. Come on in, yes. I see Miss Minnie Williams is from, she is in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Dee Fulton, where are you coming in from? Where, you, where are you right now? Come on in people. So <clears throat> tonight we are going to be discussing the opening of the way, the importance of ritual, the importance of routine, what the opening of the way means to the practitioner and, and the, the, the origin of the opening of the way and why it's something that we should practice on a regular basis and, and, wh and what it means to add structure of like a framework to what it is that you do by having a discrete or a determinative determinative beginning middle and end okay and we have this by starting it with the opening of the way we know we're about to start something great so let let's see where people are coming in from where are they coming in from? We have Joanne Jahai Adisi coming in from Columbus, Georgia. I did my time in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a Spelman College graduate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I definitely was all up in the A. We have we have Ardent Plumbing. Welcome, Hotep. Peace and respect to you. Dallas is in the house. Desiree Hall is in the boogie down in the Bronx, baby. The Bronx. Power to power to the ether. Okay, I, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that from Marin in Connecticut. Connecticut is in the house, baby. What's up? What's up? I'm from Connecticut. We have Dee Fulton, hailing from Nightdale, uh, North Carolina. <laughs> We've got. We have. Let's see. Where? Oh my goodness, my thing skipped. Kenneth Dumpson. I hope I said that correctly. Coming in from Strong Island, Jamar. He's in Long Island. Big man, my big man 29, Miami. Thank you, thank you. That hot, pretty much wet climate. It's always good for, for, for yoga on the beach. Every time I hear Miami, that's kind of what I think about is yoga on the beach. We have Jahuti Ma'at Ra Sirius coming in from Wichita. I didn't know you were in Wichita. Jamar, one of our priests. Welcome. Ontario. We've got uh, Vegas and Akima Ab. We have the DMVs in the house. We got Trinidad. Okay. I feel like a club DJ. So I'm just going to stop doing the shout outs and make sure that we get right down to what we're about to do. So, one of the things that's pretty awesome about living in New York City is the fact that we have such direct access to Baba Haru. Baba Haru is is uh, the principal uh, person who was able to bring an understanding not only of comedic sciences and comedic spirituality, but our ability to actually practice comedic spirituality and begin to create space and institutions and, 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 and a recognition that this is a legitimate spirituality. It is of our ancestors and it is here for us to practice like we did or how we recreate it for what we need in this day and age. So we are also grateful to Baba Haru for his initial believing in himself and bringing this forth. And so without further ado, I bring to all of us Baba Haru. 
Welcome, Baba. Hetepu. Hetepu. Ankan Ma'at. Ankan Ma'at. Ankan Ma'at. Yes, indeed. It's a it's pleasure so, to be here. I, you know, it's, the pleasure is all mine, and the pleasure is all everybody else's who's Good here thanks. on Tuesday Talk with us, enjoying uh, this wonderful Tuesday Talk. Wonderful. So tonight, yes. how are you feeling, Baba? I am fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Abu Vernon says black tastic when um when I ask him. Black tastic. That's black a good. Tastic. Mm. Great, great. So Baba, can you give us for those of us uh who are you know in the audience who may not know about your bio, can you give us a a, a bit of a of an introduction as to how you got started in, the, in this comedic legacy and what prompted you to create the opening of the way? Hmm. Well, it's, I, I repeat this many times, I guess they can go back and check my other um, <laughs> videos, but yes, um, I must give um, honor and credit to my, to my divine uh, father who was a Christian minister who, um, who was a bit, um, who was a bit satisfied, um, dissatisfied with the fact that um, there was so much shade being thrown on ancient Egypt. And uh, when I was young, he used to tease me. He says, "You, you're what they call a pretty boy. You're like King Tut. So I got to make you, I got to make you tough." And he succeeded, I must say, in doing just that. But he used to talk to me as I would go to his tailor shop to make buttonholes and uh, and do the overcasting on the inseam of the uh, of trousers he would say you know i'm in i'm in this christian faith and uh, i'm doing great work here he said but i wonder why we have not spoken about what the son named ham in the bible has been about and um, and so that that planted a seed very young and he would tell me that I should study everything I could about King Tut because he was a very special king of the ancient legacy. As you know, all know, everybody knows him by, his, uh, by this name, King Tut, but his birth name was Atenra Tutank, which means the, the living son on earth, literally. And later he changed his name to Amen Tutank because the Atenra honors the visible orb that we see in the heavens every day, the sun, but um, but Amen honors the hidden aspect of the Ra, the sun behind the sun. And so um, I grew up studying as much as I could about this ancient legacy. And finally, I moved to, um, to America. And here I became a naturalized citizen and worked in, in a private enterprise in what they call the corporate world as a supervisor of, um, at the time, a, a Freedom Flexor writer a department at, at the third largest hosiery firm in, in New York, um, not in New York, in the world, in, 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 uh, in the USA. And um, one day I got a call from a friend of mine who said, listen, they are giving, uh, they're giving walk, walking in exams. They want more black cops on the force because the um, New York City was overloaded and um, with other folks wearing the badge and they wanted to show a representation of the people in New York City. So I went, I took the test at the time I was not even a citizen and um, I took the test and uh, they said, as long as you are a citizen at the time of appointment, then you could become a New York City police officer. So I did that and I passed the test. And later I know I was in uniform and um, I never saw myself as a policeman. I saw myself as a peace officer. Mm -hmm. I emphasize the word peace because that's what I think that a, um, an officer should do is bring the peace by but by really making inroads into the community, talking to the people, finding out what their issues were as far as crime is concerned, and getting their cooperation. And that's something that I did, uh, I would say sometimes to the detriment of others who just wanted to have arrest numbers and, and parking ticket numbers. And uh, I found that to be a little troublesome because we were told in the academy that the first job of a... Um, 
of one in law enforcement is to pre to prevent crime. You can't prevent crime if you don't talk to the people who are the victims of crime. Right, right. And so I spent my time talking to to people and finding out what the issues were. And ultimately, I was moved to one of the toughest uh, precincts in New York City, the 7-5 in East New York. Mm -hmm. And in 1966, that was the Dodge City of, of New York City, of the boroughs of, of New York City. And uh, But I went there and they gave me a post that was one mile long on Sutter Avenue. And um, there I learned the art of interacting with the community and gaining their confidence. And uh, and that troubled some of my superiors who felt I spent too much time in conversations with the people, but I felt that was my duty. If I'm gonna prevent crime, I have to know the people who are the victims of crime and see what they wanted to do to help me to lower their, their victimization. So I ultimately, um, someone, while I was pounding the beat, brought me a tape of Dr. Ben, known as Yosef Ben Jokanan. And when I put that, that cassette tape in my cassette player, uh, I was amazed to, found, to find that Dr. Ben was saying some of the same things that my father used to say in the tailor shop. So I adopted him because my father by that time had passed in 64. And I adopted Dr. Ben as my spiritual father. And he did not know that I did, of course. And um, as we as we speed forward to 1980, I gave Doc. I became a craftsman. I found I found uh, a, a gentleman who taught me the craft of of creating sacred emblems of culture. His name is Anacleto Santiago de Colón, and um, he taught me that art. And so I began from then on to create onks. Uh, that was one of the first things that I began to do. Of course, the story is much longer, but I don't want to take up too much time with that. I want to get on to the to the subject tonight. But that's a little bit of my background. And um, ultimately, I ended up, after I began to create these emblems, I began to, I created one for myself, which I used to put over my handcuff case because the gun was here, the tool of death. <laughs> so I carried the sign of life on the left side. Uh, on the hot side. That's and right. That got me into a little bit of trouble. They had me psychologically tested and they found out that, yes, I was mad in a good way. <laughs> and uh, and um, I used it to teach while I was pounding the beat. I would teach about the legacy. As a matter of fact, that was a very effective way for me to clear the corner because some of the brothers shooting dice didn't want to hear anything about Africa. And uh, they had been so brain stained mm. and believing all the lies that Tarzan was the king of the jungle and all that kind of stuff. So, but I um, still persevered and slowly but surely, some people would come and listen to my diatribes on, on, on the beat. And that is how I conducted myself. So here I am years later. And it was there when they, when they transferred me from uh, out to Coney Island to stand in front of Nathan's hot dog. I was walking up the block on, a, on one of my um, lunch hours and I stumbled, I stumbled upon a used bookstore and in there was just about every book that one would need um, to study this legacy. All three volumes, four volumes of Gerald Massey's books, uh, the Book of Beginnings, A Natural Genesis, two volumes, Book of Beginnings, two volumes, and Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, two volumes, and then one volume of his lectures. And I also found the works of Sheikh and Ajiop in there. I found the works of, um, of Albert Churchward, Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man and the Arcana of Freemasonry, and also the books by, um, by um, oh. oh, yes, <laughs> I remember now. It was, um, it still eludes me, but several of the books that I needed to study was in that used bookstore. I bought my, my when I got off duty, I brought my T-Bird around and I put them all in the back seat there and mm -hmm. drove home and I spent my time studying um, this ancient legacy. And ultimately I decided to teach because I used to go to the lectures that Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark and so many of the greats used to give up at First World Alliance on 145th Street 
and Convent Avenue at the um, at the Baptist Church up there, Convent Baptist Church. And um, but I couldn't. I felt that the time had come. We knew enough. We got all these lectures, and we're very inspired by these lectures. But I felt the time has come for us to put Maat into practice. And so that's why I began to teach. And I got a little blowback from some of my elders for that reason, because I couldn't understand why they didn't want us to teach or to practice and to apply the things that we were being inspired to learn. I couldn't right. comprehend that. But I persevered because I knew some were afraid that we would turn the legacy into a church <laughs> because they gotten spooked out about, about the church because they felt that the church was not teaching the totality of the history of our legacy, which, by the way, all the prophets came into the continent of Africa in order to obtain knowledge, to obtain refuge, to obtain um, rescue. That's right. Um, by these peace-loving and life-loving people of the Happy River, known today as the Nile River. And so I began to teach and share this knowledge. And ultimately, after a few years of teaching Comedics 101, several students came to me and said, um, well, Baba Heru, we, we, need a, we need a ritual, something we can do every day. And I was a bit hesitant to do that because I, was, I knew that my elders were looking over my shoulder and were willing to criticize or to give me guidance, which I did not really need at the time because I knew what my mission was. I, I knew it from the time I was a child at the behest of my father. And so um, they asked me to create a ritual. They wanted to do a ritual. So I said, well, what can I do that would keep them mindful of maintaining their divine body temple? Because to me, uh, I felt that the care of this temple, because this temple, this body is our mosque, this is our cathedral, this body is our church, this is the dwelling place of the divine mother, father of all creation and all the attending powers that comes with that divine power. And so I looked, I used to leaf through so many books on ancient Egypt and I saw that there seemed to be a preoccupation with these, what they call the canopic jars that contained the main body organs of the deceased kings and queens. And... Um, I said, wait a minute, since I was stressing so much in Comedics 101, the need for us to change our dietary habits, because we, especially we men, we're eating too much, too much um, acidic foods, um, poisoning our women with, 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 um, with acidic sperm. And so I decided to, um, to, to place emphasis on the care of the body. And so I said, the ancestors took these organs out. They took out the lungs. They took out the small intestines. They took out the, the liver and then the stomach and large intestine together in one jar. And they would mummify or sahufy these organs and wrap them in hundreds sometimes of yards of fine linen and put them in the resting places. They put them into jars after they wrapped them in this fine linen. In King Tut's resting place, not only did they wrap them in fine linen, but they put them into golden jars with his face on it. And also, and then in those jars, in the golden jars, weighing seven and a half pounds of 22 karat gold. And they put those golden um, enclosures for these body parts into, into um, that, that white jar and and then they put those four jars inside of a shrine that had the, the the cobras all around the cobras of power of kundalini power all around these are shrines and i said the ancestors were trying to tell us something in death that if we preserve these organs in life we would have a a, a maximum lifespan and so i said well i will make a ritual out of this and that's how the opening of the way came into being. Finding that not only the sons of Heru, which we later found out were not Canopic jars, but they were called the Mesu Heru, or the children of Heru, 
because each of us is Heru, the hero of our own temple. That's and right. The guardians of our temple are within. The, they, they enhouse themselves in these various organs that the ancestors codified as guarding these various organs. And so I said, well, we can begin a ritual by saluting these guardians. First, we have to salute the divine, Netara, and then we must give honor to the Netaru and to all these forces of creation. And if we do this every day, uh, in addition to reading the 42, um, the 42 confessions of Mayat, which was the basic ethical and moral code of our ancestors, that this would get our day started. So I told the initiates, well, okay, we'll begin to do this and you must do it at home. When you get up in the morning, do the opening of the way. And I don't know if you have a, um, if you have a tape of that. So we do. I can share that with the audience. And then after that, I will then explain exactly what was happening. Okay, so Sean, if you could play the video, you can put myself and Baba in the back. So it's just the video of the it's opening nice. of the way. A netrak unbet het, nuke unbet het. A netrak happy, nuke happy, twau unter. A netrak serket, nuke serket. A netrak keb senuf. Nuk kebsenuf, twau inter. A netrak ast, nuk ast. A netrak amset, nuk amset, twau inter. A netrak neat, nuk neat. A netrak duamutef, nuk duamutef, twau inter. A netrak nut, nuk nut. Netrak geb, nuk geb, twau enter. A netrak shu, nuk shu, 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 shu. A netrak tefnut, nuk tefnut, 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 nuk tefnut. A netrak pau interu, nuk pau interu. A netrak unbu interu, nuk unbu interu. Twau inter. Twau inter. So we just did the opening of the way. Um, we did it a little bit unusually because we would normally stay immediately next to each other and, and simply turn so that you're always on the left and I'm always on the right. Yeah. But, um, Due to television and cables. Due to television and cables, we <laughs> were unable to do that. So. Well, Hello. That's fabulous. Yeah. My gosh, that was about what, 1998 or something like that. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah. That was are in, in Tepe, you and Nika and Jabari doing the opening of the way on Comedic Legacy. And um, what you saw there was, so we have our feminine and masculine complements, which is in everything that's alive. And that is life. That is life, right? That is Ankh. That is life. And so when, uh, you know, we saw Nika, Dr. and Tepe and Nika doing the feminine part and and Tepi Jabari doing the masculine part. And so together they were doing the opening of the way. And just like what Baba Haru was saying, the women are, are the, the divine feminine protect, protectresses and they're protecting the sons of Haru, which is, which is kind of brought to us in, in terms of the canopic jars, because each one of them is a son of Haru Jamar, can you put up one of the pictures of, can you put up, can you put up the picture of the canopic jars that has the face of them? Yes, that one right there. 
I don't know. Can we can we zoom in on that? Just 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 that one by itself, and and yeah. Happy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> that's Amset, the human face. That's Happy, the baboon. That's Kebsenuf, the falcon, and that's Duamutef, the uh, the jackal. So I'm sure they want they'd rather hear Baba Haru explain <laughs> the pairs uh, with with the with the opening of the way. So Baba, do you want to take it from the top with in bed head? Um, well, actually, um, we have we have Happy here in front of us, mm -hmm. who is protected by in bed head, and Happy is um, is assigned the lungs. The the lungs are in that jar that Happy has now. Everyone knows that the um, the Sinocephalus baboon has a behavior of you can hear him breathing all the time, <laughs> literally, and um, so and also this particular baboon they said urinates every hour on the hour, so it became a symbol of periodicity of time, and also is associated with with uh, Chehuti. Now, as a guardian of the lungs, if you salute. The principle of Hapi, by the way, as you see this animal head here, this is where the Egyptologists would accuse the ancient ancestors of the Nile of worshiping animals. Okay? Because our ancestors used nature forms to convey ideas. That's right. And it, it, it appears in the Bible when I, and I repeat this very often when in the Bible it says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. So the Christians are not worshiping ants any more than we are worshiping baboon. We are using nature forms to convey an idea. And so we salute that principle that dwells within us. Now, I would ask anyone who is smoking cigarettes, if you do the opening of the way and you are a smoker of cigarettes knowing they cause cancer, can you really honestly in my art salute the guardian of your lungs yeah. okay? And still be true in my art, and still so it, it it helps to you to stay centered in your purpose of maintaining the health of your lungs. Needless to say, in New York City, walking outside is like smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. But that's what we deal with, and that's the reason why we must feed the different herbs. So it's not only the ritual that we perform, but there's a lot that goes on behind this ritual. There's a lot that you're considering. For instance. When you, when you turn to the east to salute um, the guardian in Bethet, who whose name means the lady of the house, and to then to salute Hapi, you are actually seeing a color. And the color of that zone is usually a very dark color, like it's, um, it's uh, indigo and sometimes almost dark uh, black, because in Bethet, she is the midwife and she guards the darkest part of the night just prior to dawn. So we begin at the east because that's our orientation where the sun comes. And then we go from there to the south and there we, we salute a Serket and Kebsenuf. Now, it's amazing that for those of you who have been looking up for these jars and for the guardians of the women who, the Mutu, M Mesu Heru, or the, the female guardians, the mother guardians of the children of Heru, which these jars contain, um, you, would, you would see that they always show Serket, that deity, that female principle with the scorpion on her head, they always show Serket with the scorpion. Why? I suspect that they have, they're, they're trying to scare people away from even looking at this. Oh, they're worshiping a scorpion, you know, because the other deities, the other female deities, they have symbols like um, Nebethet has the bowl on, on, on top of a house. Jabar, J Jamar, can you show in that hat? Can you see in that hat? Yeah, the one that stands behind, um, yes, with the bowl on her head. Mm hmm. That's in bed head. No, no, she's the one with a bowl on her head, and the bowl is on top of a. There we go. 
You see that little doorway there? That's the house. That's the hut. And on top of the hut is the bowl. And I don't see the determinative on that particular drawing of the tea, which can indicates you, it's, it's Jamar, a feminine God. It's Inver okay. I'm sorry, Jamar, can you just do Invent Hut so we can see just her? It, yeah, we, take, we can see it. Yeah. She's central. Can, She's in the center. Can you see it? She's okay. One. Yes, I can okay. see that. She's the main one with the um, with the bowl on top of the house for cleansing the temple. Okay, so she guards, she 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 protects Hapi. And if you get a copy of the um, the Gods of the Egyptians uh, by Wallace Budge, somewhere in there you will find the statements that each of these mothers make towards the one that they guard. Mm -hmm. You will also find in the Pertem Hru. The and I'm not giving you the exact page because I want you to do your work to discover and to own this legacy. You've got to do some study. I, uh, many of us are accustomed to having things handed to us. You have to work for this legacy so they can really own it. And don't you don't take my word for it. Each of us is responsible for going into meditation and going deeper into the significance of these activities that we are. Um, levicating ourselves too. All right. Now, when you go and, and in each direction, you have a color. And guess what? I ask each initiate to find the herbs that would help to maintain the health of the lungs and make that, uh, put that in a potion that you will sip after you've done the opening of the way. So you'll begin the day saluting these divine guardians or angelic forces, if you wish, if that makes it more easy for you to accept it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't refer to these divine principles as gods and goddesses. We could right. not, we would not be using a German word in Africa to, to indicate the divine. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. We will be using our own terms. That's why we say Dwau Natar or Dwau Natara, appraises to the divine. I like to use the term divine because it's it's gender neutral and it can apply to masculine or feminine power, okay? But if we if we pray to the one, we will say the mother, father of all creation. We never would leave out the divine presence of the divine mother in anything we do, side by side with the divine father, because that is what Ma'at demands. And that is why you would see that wherever there's a male energy, a male force, there's a female right beside. i give you an example. If you go to the city of Menefer, or what they call Memphis, where Ptah has the shrine, you would see that there is a, fem a female principal next to Ptah known as Sekhmet, and her name means vital force or vital power. Now, let's go now to the south, and we will salute Sirket, and we will salute um, Kepsenuf. Now, Serket and Kepsenuf are guardians of the small intestines. That is the water element now. The first one, um, Nebethet and Hapi, that's the air element, the lungs, right? And now we go to the south where we salute the guardian of the small intestines. Now, um, as you know, it's through the villi of the small intestines that you get your nourishment from the food that you eat. That is where the chyme that uh, goes from the stomach goes into the, goes into the small intestine as the, the chyle. And in this chyle, you have the nourishment that goes through the villi of the small intestines directly to your bloodstream. That's why after you eat sometimes, if you eat the right thing, you don't want to go to sleep. You feel more empowered because of the fact that you're now um, giving uh, nourishment directly to your bloodstream from what you place into your body temple. And the color there, of course, is the color of the water. It looks like a blue or the color of the sky. All right. And you will see that color. Well, there you go. And then you will also do the investigation necessary to find what herbs should I use to maintain the tone of my small intestine. So you see, this is an exercise, not only in a ritual moving in these directions, but it also forces you to study your internal organs and what you can do to aid them. 
and these millions of, of these armies of cells that are in there doing their work so silently and so perfectly to maintain your ankh, to maintain your life. Okay? And now we go now from there, we go to the West. And there you would find the sister of Nebethet, who is at the East, where you began. And her name is Ust, or, or Set, as some would say, known in, in the Greek as Isis. Uh, we don't use that term because we want to be faithful to our ancestors' way of naming things. Because when foreigners come, they will always change the name to take credit for what they have discovered. So we are into the business of teaching truth and, and, and being truthful. Now, we may not know exactly how the ancestors pronounce these words, but because of our intense desire to please them, to make the effort, we know that these forces are in the Akashic regions listening and are happy that we are making the effort to once again articulate these sounds in the salute of these divine angelic or Neteru forces within us, okay? So there you would find in that jar is the liver. And now you're in the green zone because in order to keep the liver healthy, it's good to have some green and bitter things, okay? Like every so often a little bit of cascara sagrada or some aloes, not only for the inside, but aloes is great for your skin. Ask Sakara, she's an aloe queen, okay? So there you would find that the liver is, is where, where, where everything goes to be cleansed and the blood stream is cleansed by this liver. And that's why those of us who love sweets, we must balance it by having some bitters, okay? Every so often you take a little piece of, um, of, uh, of aloes and you chew on it and Find out what herbs will help you to maintain the tone of your liver, the health of your liver that does so much to purify your bloodstream from all the mess that we are sometimes habitually putting in it because we have developed some generational habits that have us like eating um, certain foods that we should, um, that is, uh, we should put under the sole, S-O-L-E, of our feet and not call S-O-U-L food because I agree, Baba. any food that promotes the death of your body or that becomes an insult to your stomach and large intestine and your liver is sh should be trampled underfoot. So that's where I call it the soul food that you should not be putting into your mouth and going into so, your body. So, Baba, I have yeah. a question that um, uh, that if you could if you could just answer this one tone johnson's question is should we not say a natural raw when doing the opening of the way since we need well, sun to tell you this, i listen i would say to each initiate when you do the opening of the way you can include all of the whatever netter you want to it's it's on you you can personalize it if you think anything is missing by all means add it for yourself Okay, I gave a bare bones ritual. It's and then other other shrines and temples are the opening up. They adopt this opening of the way, and each one of them have a little subtle difference, which is fine. We are not dogmatic. We that's don't right. say you should only do it this way. Oh no, and that's the reason why when I taught Kaminitz one hundred and one, I never sought to bind initiates onto my person. This is not a personality cult. This is about spreading our culture. That's right? right. And so um, I always was amazed to see that people who adopted the this ritual would put their own spice into it. And I said, that's so fabulous. I love to see that because, you know, the spiritual path is something that's very personal. And it's not something that can be imposed from the outside. It allows you the freedom to investigate, to see what would happen. That's what the spiritual life allows you to, to do. It, it frees you to, to, 
to find out and to experience certain states of consciousness. You know, whereas belief locks you into a door without windows, but when with knowledge, you have to open the door and venture outside and see what you can see, what you can learn, what you can explore. That's the difference between belief and spiritual and the spiritual path. The belief path, of course, has passed now because we've gone through Pisces, the age of I believe, and we are now into the I know age. And guess what? There are some people who are pissed off that this age is here because it means that now the wind, everything, the knowledge is in the airwaves. Okay, look, we have the internet, huh? Because the knowledge is available now to everyone who dares to peek behind the veil. Or rip it down. Says, huh? I said, are those of us who ripping it down? You I'm know, not peeking, we tearing it down because we all hey. see. <laughs> <laughs> ripping the veil, huh? Oh, yes. Because we want to free up our minds so that we can now have knowledge to govern our behavior, mm -hmm. not just belief. Okay. I always say uh, the bee on belief gets no nectar. You've got to go to the blossom. You got to go to the flower to get the nectar. You got to go to the truth. Okay, right. because the blossom is the sum total of everything that comes from the root. That's the gift that the plant gives to you. It's mm -hmm. very, it's very scent. Its odor is what is the gift that comes from the soil itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and now, so we are in the zone, as I said before, of the liver, the garden of the liver, and there we will see the color green. And you know, for those who like too much of of the booze, that green turns it into yellow and you get what they call jaundice. And you will see people have this yellow complexion and yellow in the whites of their of their eyes because they have liver damage because of too much alcohol. And I would say that part of the reason why the ancestors used the head of a human being as the guardian of your liver is because it's on the face of a human being that you can, that those people who are able to read faces can tell what the condition of the liver is. You notice that people who are drunk, they usually talk to the side of their mouths. They all, they do all kind of contortions with their face, okay? And you can, you can just about tell, mm -hmm, this person is really inebriated because they contort, twisting their lips in all kinds of shapes and, and forms when they are high and when they're drunk, okay? And so that's just my take on it. I'm not saying that everyone should think the same thing. But as I would meditate, I said, why do they use these animals? Why is they use the, 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 the face of a human being as the guardian of the liver? When they use the, a, a baboon for the lungs, they use the falcon for the small intestines. Now we are seeing a human head. Why, why is this? And that was my meditation that the face the, the, will let you know the condition of the liver the complexion of the face. And now we move now to the north after we have saluted um, us and Mset. Mset, the very name Mset means to make green, which invites us to get to double up and triple up on our green intake. I'm talking about raw green. Now we're living in a temperate zone. So in the winter, we want to have some warm stuff too. So I usually make my my salad dressing maybe may contain some lentils because, by the way, that was found in the resting places of the kings and queens. The lentils were part or the staple of our diet. So sometimes I would make a, a hot salad dressing, you know, with some lentils and other things like squash and whatnot and pour it over a big bed of greens, okay? And that's what I would feed my liver. And every so often I would get some cascara sagrada or I would take some of the um, some aloes to cleanse the um, the bloodstream. Baba, really quickly. I'm hmm? sorry, Jamar, can you can you put up um I'm set and ask because you're that's where you are right now, right? Right, Baba? You're with the Yes, I'm at I'm set and ask, yes. Can, can and I want see? them to see that Nebet Het, the sister of Ast, is at the east. And Ast herself is at the West, right opposite her sister. Because when these two women were resurrecting the first, the first murdered and crucified savior. That's right. Known as Asar. Mm -hmm. The template from which others took their story 
let's be plain. Let's make it plain. Plain. Let's not pretend that right. folks had an original idea. That's right. They copied and plagiarized from what was on temple walls and what they discovered in the resting places of our ancestors in the papyri. That's right. That's right. We painted pictures of these scenes of resurrection, of, of immaculate birth, okay? And all of that, all of those things that you experience in your in your devotional practice on this day, especially on Sunday morning, had a template thousands of years older than the one that you have been studying, my beloved brothers and sisters. But some folks want to make you think that they came up with these ideas and this story all on their own. No, they did not. They plagiarized and uh, literally um, um, adopted. <laughs> I want to be kind, you know. That's Father, this is a place of truth. Yeah, well, you know, I try to be kind when I explain these things to my brothers and sisters in their various fates because as the as one who is reclaiming the ancient, the most ancient ways, we are the parents of humanity. So when we bring this truth, this, this uh, truth to our people, who are involved in the belief systems, we must be very kind and we must come as a parent would it's a child. We must not beat them up because um, beating up your children does not make them love you. It does not, you, you have to be stern, of course, but you cannot be beating up people because of what they believe. You do not know why it happened that way. In our case, we know why. It has to do with, um, with some ships that has created a highway, a hydro cost to African people, a water cost to African people under the Atlantic Ocean. And that's the reason why their spirits comes with the camps and winds and brings that fine mist and that fine dust all the way from the Sahara to the West, following the same trajectory of those ships that brought our ancestors to these shores. That's right that brought some of our ancestors to these shores because some of us were already here. Mm, that's right. Okay. Okay. With the solar, wearing a solar robe. So don't you be fooled thinking that, um, that um, like they did with Tarzan, that he was the king of the jungle and they did with others to make you feel that they were the ones who opened up the West. The West was already opened by the indigenous people of, Amenta, the West, okay? All right. Now we're going to go to the North and we're going to salute the guardian Nit, okay? Who is known as Neith in the Greek vernacular, N-E-I-T-H, but we know her as Nit, N-T. And on her head, she wears a shuttle for weaving because she weaves the very fabric of your life. She puts the last stitches in your life and ensure that you would live because guess what? She's guarding the guardian of your large, of your stomach and large intestine. Now, we ought to do some study because you can go all the way to college and not know what happens to food from the time it goes into your mouth until it comes out of your rear end, okay? Here, is where they used to put the stomach and large intestine in one jar together, okay? So I would charge each of the initiates of this path to know what happens to food from the time you think about it to the time your tongue tastes it to the time it goes to the stomach, where the various acids are there and the various chemicals are there to transform this food that you've eaten into chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, I think is the way it's spelled. Um, so yes. all for you, for you um, nurses and doctors, future nurses and doctors, you know, you know the, the terms to use for these substances when they are transformed in the body. And now, uh, and then her, she, she has the shuttle for weaving, the fabric of your life, and also the arrows, the bows and arrows, because knit, those who were in the shrine of Nit, the guardians of the, um, the, the bowmen from Nubia, they presided over the temple of Nit to the northern zone of the, of the queen kingdom of Smaitawi, 
by the way, that was the name of the nation, not just Kemet. Kemet is a northeastern section of Smai, Kawi, the United Two Regions, which was inclusive of modern day Kush, now misnamed Ethiopia in the Greek vernacular, and Abyssinia in the Roman, and also Sudan or Sut, uh, the southern part of Nubia, the northern part of Sudan, which is Nubia, and finally, which was also known as Kenset. Okay. And then, then to the north, we had Kemet. Kemet was actually a creation of the soil, the rich soil that came into the waters from Lake Tana in the land of Kush. At one time, the land was not there of Kemet. It was built up from the silt that came from the, that came from the south, from the land of Kush. That's the reason why the Rastaman say that Ethiopia is the daughter, that Kemet is the daughter of Ethiopia, okay? And that is true because at one time the land was not even there. It was, and that's why. That silt, 75% of the waters of the inundation, which took place every year, the Happy River, known as the Nile, had its menstruation. Okay, it's divine menstruation. And this, this activity of the movement of the waters of the Happy River on Earth um, was heralded by a cosmic event that took place, the rise of the star Ast Sepedet, known today as Sirius, uh, also known as a dog star because of its association coming out of the Canis Major which we call the constellation of Anpu, the jackal, the canis, the dog, okay? And um, so this heavenly event, which seemed to have an effect upon the, the rise of the waters coming from the southern Lake Tana in central equatorial Africa, the so-called Iteru Hedge, known as the White Nile, meeting the, the Iteru Kesbet, the Blue Nile coming out of Lake Tana in Kush as the um, White Nile, the Iteru um, Hetch came out of Victoria Nyanza in, in uh, equatorial Africa. 25% of the waters of the inundation came from all the way to the south, just like how the civilization that later became Kemet came from the south. Sorry, it was not built by people in flying saucers. It was not built by aliens. It was built by little short people, the one that you call the Twa, the one that known as the Anu people, the first people, later um, called pejoratively by the British pygmies, okay, dealing with their stature. But these were humanity's earliest ancestors. And let us never forget to give them honor. And I'm saying to our sisters, don't, don't you be hating on sh men of short stature because they carry more of the genes of the original people of this earth. So those sisters who are looking for a man who's tall, dark, and handsome, don't you dare overlook the short ones too, okay? Because they carry something very powerful. They have to because people try to put them down all the time. And we don't have that in Kemet, okay? As a matter of fact, one of the first images of Ptah was as a Twa, one of those little people who lived in the forest of Africa, okay? So don't you ever forget that. Now, so you're saluting the, uh, the, uh, the garden to the north of, um, of Nit and uh, Lua Mutef. Gua Mutef means literally he praises his mother. Again, you better believe because <laughs> when you go to evacuate your large intestine, you give you better give praises because if you are constipated, you would find it very hard to praise your mother or to praise anybody because you're there straining and busting up your rear end and becoming a victim of... Um, a varicose veins of the anal passage, which gives you what they call hemorrhoids, okay? That is why you must put more raw green 
and more foods that have roughage so that you will have a calm evacuation and not be causing problems for yourself later in life. And I'm saying to those brothers and sisters who love to eat a lot of starch, a lot of constipating foods. I remember growing up in the islands, we used to eat cassava. And so many of the men used to come down with what they called piles or, um, or hemorrhoids, which is the varicose vein of the anal area, you see. And sometimes these veins would break and bleeding would take place, you see. So we have to be very careful how we take care of these organs. That's the reason why I say to the initiates, please study herbs and what to feed each one of these organs. Now you can compound these herbs together to create a brew, which you can have in the morning or in the evening or whenever during whenever the spirit guides you to. But you have to make herbs, the intake of different herbs and different green foods, a staple of your dietary practice, okay? And uh, watch out for the icons of food of the West. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh-huh. Watch out for the hot dogs. Watch out for the pizza pies. Watch out for the hamburgers and all of those constipating foods because that's what's taking us out. You notice with this COVID stuff, the people who were most obese were the ones who died fastest. Okay. That's right. So we have a vested interest in taking care and the opening of the way is a way to stay mindful because we can be very easily distracted, mindful of our need to take care. And after we have saluted all the guardians, all those eight guardians, the four females and four males of the house, now you're better, you're ready to put the roof on your house to give adorations to Newt, to give adorations to the floor of your house to give Geb. And notice here that heaven to us was feminine because that's the womb that holds all the objects of creation. So it makes sense that that would be feminine. And to us, the earth was male, Geb. That is not to say that the earth does not have a female aspect. Oh, Mother Earth, we call her because her topsoil is the one that feeds us. The topsoil is her breast that grows the foods that we put into our bellies to be nourished, okay? So the bedrock, however, where the minerals are, is given to Geb, the male principle. Excuse okay. me, Father. Excuse me. Jamar, yes. can you can you put up the picture of, of Newt and, um, and Geb? <coughs> we have a few of them, and I wanted to, yeah. So- There we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. And By Sean, the way- can you, can you take me off, Sean? So we have a bigger, closer view of Baba and the picture. Now, I want you to um, to keep an eye on Newt. Now, on some of the icons, sometimes you would see you would see that Geb has a henanum, which they call penis. I don't like that word. It's too puny sounding for us. We call it henanum. Um, coming from his navel, not from his crotch, from his navel area. This is what we call cosmic conception. And between um, Newt and Geb, we've now though Newt is your 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 ceiling or your your heaven, and Geb is your earth. Geb is your foundation. So your very ideas come streaming to you from space, okay? Not from your just your brain. Your brain is the the pro, what processes the visions that you get from the cosmos, y'all, all right? And um, and between Newt and Geb, finally, we salute Shu, the air element, the wind, and Tefnut, the moisture. And in some of the iconographies, you will see that Shu is, a, is a shown as someone kneeling on a, a, a symbol for gold, and in Shoes, hands are, onks are on his elbows, onks are all over, onks are in his arms because that is the zone, that's the atmosphere that gives you your life, your breathing and your water. And you know, your breath is filled with water. If you doubt me, get a mirror 
and breathe out on it and see if a mist of water doesn't come out, okay? So they were they both work together, okay? So this these are the various principles that we honor when we do the opening of the way. We say Anesharak Nut, Anuk Nut, Anesharak Geb, Anuk Geb. Duau inter. Notice we say duau inter. We say praises to the divine for these divine forces and for the ancestors for leaving us a template by which we can renovate our consciousness along the lines of our ancestors. We must honor our source, not just these late comers that try to be the know all and be all that we are supposed to be following. No. We must follow the path of the ancient ones. And this way we would not be suffering these hurricanes and these tornadoes that's tearing up the earth because there's an entity that has invaded this planet, an entity that's pure evil that we refer to as the Apap, a many-folded um, dragon that conceals so much evil in its folds. And this evil has a way of manifesting sometimes through human beings of all complexions. Let's not assign evil to any one being or to any one group of beings, because all of humanity has both to contend with both realms of the good and the evil. It's your choice. But when you follow Ma'at, it keeps you on the side of that which is good, of that which is powerful, of that which is growing, of that which is turning its back on, on, the, um, on, on death, that, that which is emphasizing the life force. So the opening of the way is a ritual that reminds you of all of this. And then you say, Anajirak paut in teru, paut, or which we call the pasaj, or the nine forces in creation. By the way, nine is a very powerful number because it really is a one, because you, you notice the zero comes before the cipher when you create the the number nine, and then when you come back to one, which you call a 10, you have the cipher, the one, and then you have the zero after. So nine is a very powerful, um, a very powerful um, number. It's a number of completion. It brings you back to that one. And by the way, if you would notice, oh, there is, ah, there is, there is Shu. And look at Shu has in, in his arms, you have, you have um, in his in his uh, bicep, he has an ankh hanging from his bicep, from his right bicep, and there is the four um, the four powers of the jed column, the symbol of stability and power. And flanking them, there is the eyes of Heru, the Maat Heru, on on both sides of the. Where did they go? Wait, quick question. I'm Ooh, sorry. Yeah. Can can you, Sean? There can you, you go. Mm -hmm. Can you make this picture? So can you take me off and then make the picture like as big as possible, so everyone can see Baba. But make the picture big because there's so much going on in the picture. Oh yes. Yeah. So take me off and just Baba in the picture. I think they can see it pretty well. No, make the picture bigger, not Baba. No, 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 no. Um, not my person, please. Let's focus on the lesson. There you go. Fabulous. Look at what's happening. Look on the back of Newt's, on the back of Newt's boat. There's a boat on her, on, 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 on going up her thigh, okay? Because she's about to give birth to Ra, give birth to the Aten Ra, the sun, all right? And notice the boat goes and comes down to the um, to the west, where she swallows Ra. She swallows the Aten Ra at at at, uh, at night. Okay, and notice that on on um, the 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 symbol of Ra is a falcon. Now the falcon is also a symbol of Heru. But when the falcon is shown with a with a solar disk on his head, out of which emerges the intuitive power of the serpent. Go to the um, 
be ye wise as serpents and harmless as doves. People say, well, why all these snakes in ancient Kemet? Because look, your Bible say that serpents can teach you things, okay? And the serpent really is your, what they call in the, um, in the East, in India, the Kundalini force, okay? We call it the, um, the second power, the second force, okay? Or the Sekhmet force. And um, and there there is um, there is the um, the symbol of Shu to the to the right right below the um, the uh, the boat of Ra at the, at, at the setting receiving receiving the Ra with the uplifted arms. Okay. So when you look at these pictures, they give you an insight into the into the way the or your ancestors thought. They thought in signs and symbols. And we need to go back to reclaim using signs and symbols again um, and making it part of the graffiti that we, um, that we display in, um, in the cities and putting that feather of Ma'at wherever we can so that people will know it's time to return to Ma'at. Because we're living in a time when, as you all can see, uh, um, Living a life of lies has become very popular. Liars are being supported and are being hailed as, as heroes. <laughs> and so, as you know, and you know, when people are promoting a lie, you wonder, will these people have children? Would they like their children to lie to them? Recently, a teacher was killed by a six-year-old with a pistol that he hid in his, in his um, school bag. And I'm sure when his mother says, where's that pistol? He lied to her. So, but we are now in the, in the habit of supporting liars and making lying a thing. Meanwhile, we don't want our children to lie to us, but we are setting them a perfect example so they can grow up as liars, are we not? Huh? So that's why now ma'at is needed more than ever before. And I say this to my brothers and sisters in the hip hop world. We are killing ourselves. We're walking around wearing that, that cross that reminds us of a crucifixion, of a, of a tremendous, of a terrible um, violence visited upon a great prophet. Okay. Meanwhile, we are trying to remember that we are told this prophet died for us, but we are killing each other. Okay. With these guns being driven by people who are supporting lyrics that encourage violence in our communities. And not only in our communities, because everybody throughout the world is listening to hip hop. And many of the producers are encouraging the writers of these lyrics to put nasty terms in there to give young people nasty ideas. And it's filled with pornography. And that's another thing that they're training the youth to turn away from a righteous life and a more uh, attention that should be paid to the development of their sexuality and their sensuality. And um, so we must pay attention to what's going on and bring back my art because the whole purpose of the opening of the way is to open our consciousness to, to the maintenance of my art, righteousness, balance, order, truth, reciprocity, sobriety, harmony, and propriety. All of these divine principles in English reside within the principle of Mayet. Okay? And she's shown as a woman with a feather in her headband. Okay? While today we see the one who they replaced Mayat with, just ice, <laughs> who you call justice, she pretends that she doesn't see who's filling up her jails, okay? With her blindfold and everybody knows that, everybody knows that's a crock because who's filling up the jails? Continuing slavery through a 13th Amendment hmm? where people are being put in jail for having a little roach of marijuana in their possession and they're being enslaved once again because the 13th Amendment provides for the enslavement of so many people that are now working for corporations in these jails. 
for 10 cents an hour, maybe not even that much, more like five cents an hour, okay? So this is what is going on. So this is why we must raise my art once again. But to raise my art, you've got to bring yourself into my art. So you become a walking testimony to the efficacy of living a Ma'atian lifestyle, of keeping your body in perfect balance, getting your exercise. And that's why I've started walking more than I used to. Okay. Notice that the two falcons right underneath shoes, who is in the center, that is a falcon Heru. And notice the, the, the symbol of my art is right in front, that feather of truth is right in front each of those falcons. And that's who you are, beloved brother and sister. You are the falcons of truth. You are Herut, you females. You are Heru, you males. And when you are Heru, when you've taken that anointing on, and that's something that no one can put on you, that's something that you must put on yourself to be the hero of your own life. That's where the word hero comes from, from the word Heru, even though the Greeks changed it to Horus to hide the origin and the true sound of the hero in you, the Heru in you. And look, one thing about the Heru, the spirit of Heru, it, it has a keen vision. It never misses what it aims for. Two miles up in the air, it spots mm -hmm. a uh, or a flock of pigeons two miles down, and it decides which one it's going to have for dinner or for breakfast, and it's on it in no seconds flat. From two miles up, it mm -hmm. never misses what it aims for. And this is the kind of attitude that those of us who claim this legacy must have, that we will always aim for the good, aim for the highest, because the falcon flies higher than any other bird. There's only one bird that outflies the falcon for short distances, and that's the one they call the mockingbird. But for a long distance runner, Heru is the principle that you want to envelop, that you want to claim, that you want to be the hero of your own life so that you would be faithful to the Ankh. Mm. By the way, can you imagine if the brothers out there with their guns killing each other were wearing the Ankh, a sign of life instead of a sign of death, how things would be transformed in our consciousness. And that's the reason all of you who are into this path, you are life's people. Because when you look on the temple world, you would see people who are carrying this in their hand and they're holding it by the mother womb of it. So that's why we must always respect the mother principle in our women. And brothers, keep your hands off our women unless you intend to put your hands on her with divine myrrh, with loving care. Don't you dare smack your grown woman who is your wife or your girlfriend. She's not your child, okay? Don't come thinking that you can control her by beating her up, okay? That is not done by Heru, okay? Heru always, Heru nech hratef ema henamut, that Heru defends and avenges the wrongs done to mother and father. Mm -hmm. So, Baba, I just want to yes. jump in and say, uh, Baba Haru is giving us an amazing lesson, not just about the opening of the way in general, but the opening of the way in specific with the history that we started off with to give, to give the creation of this ritual context, explaining it in terms of its of its juxtaposition to the continent, to the motherland, to Kemet, explaining each cardinal direction, the, the element that goes with it, the divine feminine that protects the divine masculine of the sons of Peru, the herbs that go with the particular organs that are preserved post-physical death and in the tradition of our ancestors and if that is not enough for you to pick up your phones and make a donation to our elder who's given us this for more decades than some of us have been alive, then I don't know what to tell you. Please, let's make a donation to Baba Haru. Can we, let's just do it right now. B-A-A-B-A-H-E-R-U on Cash App. Let's show our love and myrrh with some coins, people. 
Okay, electronic coins in the Cash App. I just wanted to say that. I also want to say, now we're not done. We're, we're not done because we still have a little bit more to go with the opening of, of the way. But Jamar, can you put up the slide where you can see half of Newt and the sun is right in front of her mouth. And that way we can talk about how new, how the sun, how Ra, there we go, how Ra travels through. Uh, well, so, so first she ingests the sun, which would be parallel to the sun setting, which would be parallel to uh, the, when at night, when like right now, Newt has already, well, well right now in New York City, let me be clear, at nighttime, when the sun has has gone down physically, mythologically, Newt has swallowed the sun. So, Baba, can you take us through that and what and what we're looking at in terms of Newt and its relation to the sun in relation to Ra? Mm. Again, um, we want to differentiate. We we want to um, say what is the quality of this Ra. This the the quality of this Ra is the Aten Ra, okay? By the way, that was the birth name of King Tut. His name was Aten Ra, Tutank, okay? Um, and here she is swallowing the sun, literally that, the, that space which she represents, because space is a gigantic womb that has all of these life forces moving inside of her. Look at the, look at the various stars in her body. Each of those are constellations and they are billions of these constellations in, in heavens, in the heaven of Nut, okay? And our ancestors drew pictures so that the person who was not even aware or um, knew the, the, the process intellectually could see it for what it is because we used to think in symbols. We used to think in these forms. And that's why our ancestors use drawings. In the same way we use graffiti today, only problem is that the graffiti we're putting on the walls is not this kind of uh, cosmological graffiti. It's more uh, a whole bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with, with the high science that our ancestors have put on the temple walls, okay? So there we see Newt swallowing the sun. When, when the sun seems to go to sleep, actually it's not sunrise or sunset, it's more like earth, earth turn, okay? That causes these differentiations between day and what we call night. Between um, Hru and Ger. Hru is the day, Ger is the night, okay? Oh, you notice I roll my R and I want you all to try, practice rolling your R to energize your Ra because your Ra right in the center of your, of your what you call the solar plexus. Why do they call it solar? Because when you flex, when you say R, you have to flex that muscle, that solar plexus region and you sense heat throughout your body. Okay? And that's one of the things when you're walking in the cold, when it gets very cold, you just um, mumble to yourself rrr, rrr, and see if it doesn't warm up your body. Okay. When I had to do straight eights because they used to come and supervise me all the time because I was too uppity and they wanted to uh, teach me lessons, I would stay warm out in the cold because I had to be out there if I didn't want to be disciplined. <laughs> and so I would say rrr, rrr, and sometimes when the, the superior officers would come and they would see me sweating out there in the cold, they say, are you okay, officer? I see you're sweating, you have a fever? No, I'm just uh, here enjoying the weather. But when they drove off, I'd go back to my and I would stay warm throughout the day. And my then wife used to buy me long johns every winter to keep me warm, but I had the sound that of ra that kept me warm also. So you can practice that as much as you can because English ha has kidnapped your tongue. And that's the reason why you must always, always seek to replace certain terms that we use in English with the committed terms, with our ancestral terms to empower ourselves. Instead of life, we should say unk and uh, unk and no, and put money in the bank, okay, and be anchored in your purpose. Be steadfast, you see, and 
Notice your ankle is so important. If you have an injury to your ankle, your ankle supports your whole life. Okay, your knee, your K N E K N N K, the reverse of of um, of, uh, of 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 knee. There is another N K. Okay, so um, use these terms, and you will find it empowers you and enlivens your your cells in your body. Now, uh, the, we we are seeing all of these all of these figures. What's going on inside of this picture of Newt? Go and meditate on this picture. Contemplate this picture, and it will lead you into meditations. Okay. Okay. And that's one of the ways in which you you will um, access the fields. The, what they now today refer to as the quantum fields, which we refer to as the Seket Neteru, the fields of the divine forces of creation. All right? And um, so when you're doing your own research, you're mm -hmm. especially when you see a Neteru such as, such as Newt, you'll see Newt interacting, if you will, with other Netaru. You could see her um, with Geb, and then there are various scenes with her and Geb. You'll see Geb, sometimes you'll see him with his henanem, sometimes it, it'll, it'll be, um, like Baba Haru said, coming out of his navel, and other uh, scenes you'll see it's kind of hanging to the side you'll see him with I don't know forgive me Baba I don't know the comedic word for testicles but you do see his henanem and his testicles just kind of chilling so that's that's um one scene that you'll see yeah, the testicles are geri 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 which means beneath okay <laughs> what's what's but the I... comedic term for just chilling just hanging around what's that what's the comedic term for that because we see men who has an erection and we see Gab, who's just kind of laying, he's just really relaxed. Well, no, Gab is not in, you see, the 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 guardians, the so-called guardians of our morality, they've chipped away the henanum that's on most of these pictures. And the modern okay. artists, the modern artists who do depictions, they leave that out because you see, to people who are unnatural, they see sex as something dirty. Okay, but and what about the what about the position of Newt uh, of Geb? He just seems to be reclined. I always looked at that as the energy was um, at ease, that there wasn't much tension or anything like that. And and also in addition to that, his 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 genitals were also just relaxed. I I beg to differ on in many of the pictures. Okay, his genitals were. Coming out, out, not from his crotch, but from his navel. Mm -hmm. Okay, showing that um, he is uh, he helps he helps the process. And by the way, um, that was the preferred um, the preferred position for bringing a very powerful seed into the world because your sperm is going against gravity. By the way. It's not that the sperm is swimming to the egg because the egg is magnetic. The egg is calling the sperm forth, you see. But mm. the sperm also has a tail to assist its process, to assist its climb to the egg. Okay. Mm. Nowadays, men love the missionary because they consider themselves to be on a mission. <laughs> the missionary position while the queen is on her back. But notice that Geb is looking up into the face of Newt. And mm -hmm. brothers, um, whether up or down, it's a wonderful thing to regard the face of the queen. Many of you, uh, because of all the twerking going on, are uh, entering the back door. And I would suggest you stop that practice because you are killing our women with feces. It's called blood sepsis, okay? You cannot be carrying particles of feces to the divine heaven of the womb, okay? You respect that womb. 
no matter how she twerks, it's her face that should matter to you in her ecstasy. You cannot see from the back of her head, bro. Mm -hmm. Doggy style, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you a dog? Oh, I know some of you call yourself a dog. No, you are a prince of this earth, a prince of the sun, princesses of the sun, a king of the sun, a queen of the sun. That's right. If you don't believe that, then take off that solar robe that you call black skin. Mm, solar robe, I like that. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I see we need to have another show with Baba Haru and, and divine, divine, divine intercourse, divine sex. I, I'll think of a nicer way to say it, but uh -oh. <laughs> we're going to have Baba Haru. It's going to get, it's going to, we're going to turn it up. <laughs> so we're going to, let's, let's go back to, let's get back to the opening of the way. But you know what? One of the things that's great about having Baba is that we, we can see how everything is interconnected and that it isn't something that is completely separate and segmented from what we're discussing. And, and one of the things that hopefully over time that you've come to understand with, with Tuesday talk and, and with Ascension, with the Shrine of Ma'at, with Communion, with the Temple of Anu, when we have Infidigi, with everything and everybody that we have, our culture was not segmented where you do one thing over here and then you do something completely different over here, which has nothing to do with this over there, no the way we thought and the way we connected to the divine and everything we ate and did, et cetera, was a reflection of, of, of that one belief, uh, one way to live, of that one connection to the oh. divine within us and that one connection to the so. divine. So, so there is no segment that's separate and non-tangential to something else. And we see that in our explanations, how they can go in, infinite 360 degrees because that's how we lived our lives so even with our tuesday talks and explanations you could you you you, you should hopefully are able to kind of sense that when when we start talking about one thing and then we end up talking about something else like come on oh <laughs> he's so shy that's my son <laughs> that's elaton I named oh. it after the uh, after the rising sun. Yes. You won't come on camera. Come on camera. We well, live. you know he's very shy. Well, no, he's not really shy, but he says, "I'm not in my." Because he came to do some some work, some cleaning up in the back there. So oh. he's, he's saying <laughs> he's, he he's not fresh right now. He said he ain't fresh. You don't want right, you know. All right, yeah. all right. He he he, he copped a little bit of vanity from his dad. You know, I'm a Leo. You know, let us know. A, he's Any a Virgo. <laughs> he's a Virgo. Yeah. Well, let him know anytime it's a Tuesday, he might just be on be on screen. So he needs to come dressed on Tuesday. That's right. <laughs> you heard that, bro. I sure did. Okay, <laughs> more you, son. And thank you so much for coming oh, in. That's so sweet. That is so sweet. Mm. Okay, so we where were we? We were at Newt and Geb. So uh are we are we ready to move into Paus or are we still are we here? I, I don't oh, know yes, exactly bro. where you want to go, Baba. Um, look at look at the, how the how the solar orb is moving through her body. I have a picture here where there are twelve solar orbs, which represent twelve hours of the day and twelve hours of the night. And notice all these personages below her body in this part in this particular drawing here. I mean, it's filled with so much going on in the cosmos and on our Earth. You know. And just reading these symbols alone is is a is a is a wonderful thing for us to contemplate what our ancestors are trying to. And you notice they are very much into the star world. Nowadays, people are talking about star travel. Now people are talking about the quantum fields and how to access these fields of the cosmos. Okay. Nowadays we are talking about Atlantis, Lumeria, and Mu and Nibiru. Okay. Um, I need to say that I think that um, some of us are very involved into the what if by dealing with the story of Atlantis, that legendary place of Lumeria, another legendary place, and of Mu. I'm not saying that these places did not exist. They may, they may have existed, or they may have just been 
aspects of consciousness that humanity had arrived at at various phases in their development, okay? It may not have been a place of uh, geographical location. It may have been a place of spiritual location. Atlantis may have been a, 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 a state of mind, a state of higher consciousness, okay? But you see, because you can put your finger and you can get on a plane and go and visit Kemet, there are some forces that are trying to um, throw some S in the game, if you know what I'm saying, to keep you from investigating what's before your eyes, because a lot of us like to speculate about the what-if existence. A lot of us like to avoid the study needed to, re to own our legacy, to reclaim it again. You see, so we like to go on these trips about in the, at Atlantis where you better put on your diving suit because they said they found some place under the Bimini Triangle in uh, around the Bahamas, okay, which, as I said, represents the lost cities of Atlantis. Why are you so concerned with the lost city of Atlantis when Kemet is in your face with messages, messages written deep in stone? And on papyri throughout the Western world and all of their museums, they're showing off your culture, but you have been made afraid of it because of the silly movies being made in Hollywood, showing scarabs eating people. That is a lie to turn you away from this culture. Okay? The early Christians referred to Jesus as a good scarab because they knew those who were educated in, in, the, in, in uh, Alexandria from the books that Alexander the Greek brought from all the temples where he had his army bring steal those books and bring them back to the library that he built in Alexandria, where Plato and all of these other so-called philosophers were being taught in the elementary science of African wisdom. Oh, yes. So um, study. Get into the contemplation of these pictures, my brothers and sisters. Get they will lead you into meditation of the various fields of, of um, the fields of Hetapu, the fields of offering, the fields of the, the, the Seket Earu, the, um, the fields of the blessed, of the blessed ones, the, the, the fields, the, the fields of the Netaru, the divine principles and emanations of the, from the one who is all divine, the Neb. Netaru, okay, the field of the Netaru. And then when we say Anejarak Paut Netaru, we are adoring the nine, which is the completion. And then we say Anejarak Mbu in Teru, all of the divine forces. We are also saluting all the divine forces. And that is how we close that ritual of the, the um, opening of the way, the Apwat Wat. O opening of the way. All right. Apwat means to open. Apwat. And what is the way? Apwat what? Isn't that, neat, isn't that a neat sound? Apwat what? Apwat what? <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Jamar, can you put up the. So when I was looking for the pout, it was, I don't think I got it because it wasn't nine, uh, but I got the what I could get. And um, Jamar, would you be would you be able to put up the the twelve? Oh yes. Sometimes I need to say it all depends upon where you were, mm -hmm. because there were subtle differences in the various temples. Don't forget, we had forty two hesepu, known as gnomes or states, like the United mm -hmm. States. There were forty two in Kemet. There were twelve. There were twenty two in the south, and four and um, and twenty in the north. All right, and each of these, when when the when the um, the functionaries in the temples went to the priests and the and the um, and the oracles to have them to compose a book for them that they can study in their life to pre to prepare them for living after living. All right, they yeah. would um, they would have to, they would school them in the in these in these divine principles. You see, and um, so in certain temples there would be there would be um, twelve nataru making up the the paut, and in others there would be I think in the papyrus of Nu there were fourteen. 
Okay, in the pap in the papyrus of Anui, there are twelve. In other papyri, there are nine. It all depends upon because everything was not a carbon copy of the other. The 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 the, the worship and the the praise was expressed in different ways depending upon which temple you were was in your hesep, mm -hmm. in your zone. Okay. However, the Nile River was a highway where brothers and sisters would be taking um, different little boats up and down the Nile, visiting this temple for this um, celebration because we partied a lot. But the parties were like the African Arts Festival in Brooklyn, where the various crafts people would bring out their wares. And that's why there was so much found even in the sand of the desert of the mm -hmm of the creation of the hands. And that's why, as a keeper of the Shrine of Patah, I want to encourage our brothers and sisters to use their hands again, to draw, to carve, get some wax, get some mud, carve something, do something, show the ancestors that you remember them and create the emblems of the culture, the Ankh, the Eye of Heru. Why do we find in all of the museums, why do we find these emblems of culture? because our ancestors were busy. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful useku, or the collars that they wore around their necks. And the women wore a blossom of, um, of a lotus on their ears, sometimes hanging from right in front of their forehead. Because some say that some of the lotus gave, a, gave off an aphrodisiac odor that would keep them very virile. <laughs> know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> All of that is part of our lifestyle, y'all, okay? Oh, look at these deities. Now, this is what gets us into trouble with Egyptologists. They accuse us of animal, uh, animal worship. Oh, wait, Ooh. I'm sorry. I took it off by mistake, I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Here, here is, you have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Am I right? I did it. Yeah. There in the front is us. And there is the, there following us, the Divine Mother is her son, Heru, wearing the double crown, the white crown um, and the red crown of the north and the south. The southern crown is the white or the northern crown is the red crown. And then we have Sashat. Look at her. Some say that that plant that has seven rays was, you know what, was ganja. Well, we are not saying and it was or it wasn't, but we see these horns um, over it, put, uh, saying that be careful how you approach this plant, because some of you get into these plants and the ayahuasca and these, and you go on these journeys without a guide, without preparing yourself for the journey, and you then freak out because you see things that scare the living daylights out of you. I remember I took some mushrooms doc, from Dr. Sebi once, and I became I became an aloe tree in the forest with big aloe leaves, and I was laughing, ha, 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 ha. And guess what? To this day, whenever I want to bring back that scene of that journey, I can do it like that. I'm right there. And it makes me happy and joyful. That's a memory. And you can do the same thing in dreams. You can bring back a lot of beautiful experiences from your dreams, which you can relive over and over. It's your privilege. It's your own internal movie. I know a lot of you spend a lot of time looking at external movies being produced by people who don't like you That's and true. putting their messages in out there. You can go to have a movie within your head and you can go anywhere and do whatever you wish, but let it be in my art, please. Okay. <laughs> well, now there is there's Sebek. Oh, the crocodile, Sebek. And people who live near a river would, of course, have respect for the crocodile and would have and would be sure to feed the crocodile so it doesn't come and eat your children. Okay. And um, then there is Asa wearing the crown, the Atef crown on his head, a white crown uh, on both sides of Asa with his green face representing vegetation, y'all, because Asa. The principle of Asa was the one that the, the, the gardeners and the farmers adored because Asa 
he uh, when Asa came, he, um, he he taught the first created folks how to stop killing each other, how to stop their cannibalistic ways, and how to grow their food. So Asa became the netter of agriculture, and that's when you see the green face means if you want to have a green face, you better get with the green stuff in your belly. And there, um, there is another another one of Heru. I don't see, oh, Kansu? Hmm, but Kansu, I don't see Kansu with his, with his side lock because Kansu is shown sometimes as a falcon. Kansu is the lunar principle of Heru, okay? So I did not notice that they had at the bottom here on the second one after us. Actually, Heru should be coming right after his mother. And then Kansu would usually come after Moot. Okay. Now, so we have Heru here. That's where they placed Heru. Okay, we're not going to argue with it, but the, at least you know that Heru and Kansu are two aspects of the same thing. Heru is solar, Kansu is lunar, but they're both aspects of Heru, Heru of the day and Heru of the night. And then you have to, to the very end, there is the great emblem of the healer. There is Sekhmet, her vital force. And she's wearing, she's a daughter of Ra. And when humanity had turned against the ways of Ra, O Ra dispatched his eye in her name of Sekhmet. And Sekhmet is one of the seven manifestations of Het Heru, who dwells in the Pleiades, uh -huh, those seven stars. And check out, she is also the she covers, she's a netert, netert. You see, neter is masculine, netert. The T is a feminizing factor in the language of the mpu, mkur, or the metunet, or the merunet, sure, as some would say. And notice the symbol of Ra on her head with the serpent of healing going through the sun, all right? The symbol of intuition, which is the domain of the divine feminine. That one who tells you, who knows you are lying because she can read, she can read your your, your vibrations, okay? And Sekhmet, some people say, well, she represents the ferocious daughter of Ra who was slaying those who were against the ways of Ra. But guess what? In doing that, she was purging the earth of evil. The way the storms are now haunting certain lands because certain lands need to be purged of evil. And Sekhmet, she brings the fire, the healing fire that purges evil. Okay. And now let's go to the bottom low. There is Het Heru, who the Greeks call Hat Hor, but we know her as Het Heru. And she wears the disc of the, of the cow. Why? Because the cow is, we observe a cow with its calf, it's so nurturing. And that's the principle of Heteru in our women. She feeds her baby from her very breast, from her body, she feeds her baby. And some grown babies like to feed at her breast likewise, for other reasons, of course. And notice that all of them are holding the sign of life, the sign of the Ankh in their hands. So this, this, was, a, this was a divine principle of the support of the life force. We are life's people. We are not death's people, okay? We went from life to life, from, from, um, from living to the living after living because our life is never ending. But don't think that in every life that you return to, it's going to be manifesting or womb-festing in in the same way, okay? You may come in different forms and um, adoring different principles. And there behind Heteru is Set. Set is a gravity, a gravitational pull. Oh, by the way, notice on my finger, I'm wearing Set, okay? I put Set on my right hand, facing out as my guardian, from those who come with a low energies, but I wear Heru on my left hand because my left is connected to the mother side of my brain, the right side, my right brain, 
Okay, and Heru adores Meru, and Mut adores his mother, Aset, and he avenges the wrongs done to his father. Heru Nech Ratef Henamut avenges the wrongs done to mother and father. Our mother, Ast, has been insulted. They changed her name from Ast or Set to Isis. And now there's some crazy idiots running around in the East calling, being called by that name, okay? They are sullying the waters of our legacy, but because we do not know that that legacy belongs to us, we think that the people who are now inhabiting that land are the ones who were there thousands of years ago. Well, the truth is some of them still have the genes and the DNA of ancient ones, but the majority of them are children of the rapes of that land by Assyrians, by Persians, by Greeks, by Romans, and later came in 640 AD, the Arabs and the Moors, okay? And at first they were very benevolent in getting rid of the Romans, but they decided to stay. They were supposed to leave so the people can go back to their ancient ways, but they stayed. And even though it's against the religion, to have to be around images and what they refer to as idols because there's so much money being made, some folks decided to stay and make the money from the ancestor, from our ancestors' resting places, which they have sold on the black markets throughout Europe. And there is Taurt, the Greek scholar Theoris, okay, and she has the hippopotamus, the hind part of the hippopotamus, and she's carrying in her hands the sa on her, in her right hand, and that sa is a symbol of protection. It looks the it's a it's a bundle of papyrus, of dried papyrus that the boatmen on the Nile used to put around their necks so that if they fell overboard they would float. Okay, so that sa became a sign of protection. By the way, I have sa earrings and I have sa pendants too for you brothers and sisters who perhaps don't know that I'm also a craftsman and I have the world's largest collection of sacred joy ari for my brothers and sisters. Okay, and there is Amun. And they use a U, I guess, to disguise the fact that that word, which means the hidden one, the mysterious one, is a name that we invoked when we were when we were dealing with the hidden powers of the divine netara, the the one divine that inclu is inclusive of all the netaru. You see, we believed in the one that had many expressions. The one is netara or nebet nebercher, the lady lord to the ultimate limits. Is his her name? Is her his name? Nebercher nebet. The lady, Neb, the Lord, chair to the limits, okay, and beyond limit, limitless one, the limitless divinity is the one that we call the Amun. And that's why all the three major religions invoke that sound at the end of their prayers. And you have been told it means so be it. Well, that is how the copyists have interpreted it, but your earliest ancestors say, no, the Amen is the mystery that conceals the divine, the power of the divine, which you can only access this mystery through devotion and meditation. Okay, and right after Amen, there is Chehuti, the Ibis, but Chehuti has another aspect to Chehuti, the the Sinocephalus baboon, the one that urinates every hour and the hour. So Tehuti deals with the word, and Tehuti also deals with mathematics. Some say Jehuti, okay? The Greeks refer to Jehuti as thought, T-H-O-T-H, -T -H, thought, from which we get the word thought, because Tehuti preserves the word, which is the mind of the divine written in the cosmos, okay? The bill of the ibis bird copies the stylus that the scribes, the seshu, because our word for scribe is sesh, and those who were collectively the scribes are known as the seshu, they wrote with that quill, 
which they dipped in red ink to begin their chapters and they continued with black ink. And guess who is copying that in King James using red ink and black ink for the word? Who do you think they copied that from? From the people who rescued and taught all of their major prophets. And that's why I'm gonna say this to you before I leave, because I'm closing up here now with Patah. Patah is the foundation. Patah is not behind. Patah is the one who supports all of this, these concepts. Because in the city of Menefer, where there was a temple raised to Patah, Patah, by the way, we say Patah because the R makes it easy to pronounce, but it's Now you say that over and over and you will see how warmth goes throughout your body. That's why Patah was known as the netter of the fire. Mm. And when we had a Nubian steam hut up in Pegleg, Pegleg Bates' property up in, uh, up in upstate New York, we, I was the fire keeper. I was the one who brought the hot rocks into the, into the Nubian steam hut which they called Inipi, or the steam hut that the, native, um, the natives of this land also cleanse themselves by going in the steam hut. And of course, the Russians have the Russian bathhouse here in New York City, and the Russians likewise took it up. And throughout Europe now, they are cleansing themselves because of what they learned in Nubia and what they learned in Kemet. So there's Pater, the, the divine craftsman, the craftsman, Okay, the divine craftswomen are all under the auspices of Ptah. The architects who laid the 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 um, the black prints for their temples, which they oriented towards starlight and towards sunlight, they were all initiates of the the shrine of Ptah, the Kera Ptah, the Kera Ptah. Okay, so. I need to say also this before I go. The name of the divine, Nkara, and the name for Nk begins with water, a wave of water. Mm. Mm. That wave is not just water, it's electromagnetic current because water is the greatest conductor of electricity in the world. Okay, that's why when you get, if you put your hand into a socket and you're standing in, in, in water, you would be, well, you, you would be fried because there's electricity in water. There's electricity in your divine feminine partner. That's why you check before you enter. Okay, brothers? <laughs> no dry stuff here, okay? Prepare for your journey into heaven my brother, by raising the magnetism of the electromagnetic current of her waters. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, so there I've given you a little insight into these powers that they refer to as gods and goddesses. No, no, no. We never use any German names to invoke these divine neteru, these divine forces. And the very word neteru begins with the N again, that electromagnetic current. And that is what you must use to access these divine seket, these divine fields that would lead you into realizing the neteru that live within you. Know that you may pray to a universal heaven, but hey, tell Elon Musk, Elon Musk is his name, that there's a way to travel that doesn't involve propane or atomic energy. You can go in a clean way by going within. That's how you access outer space. Okay? You don't need these ships where if you get stranded, you'll freeze. I know you want to go to heaven and you want to freeze, but heaven is within you. Okay? That's where heaven is. Newt is within you. All right? Because whatever is within is without. And you can access what is without by going within. All right? It's the safest way to travel, brothers and sisters, in all kinds of ways. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Baba. Dua, 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 Dua for being on tonight. The opening of the way is something that is so special and powerful and beautiful. And I love doing the opening of the way in the morning and um, being back in New York City, it is so much noisier <laughs> than in Connecticut where you could hear, where you just hear the midnight, the, the nighttime sky. And even as a little kid, I used to like the, the night or the early, early morning because I felt like I was the only one awake in the world and it was mm. just quiet and peaceful. And I could just look at the stars. Like I just remember doing that when I was a kid and I really liked doing that. And when I, part of the reason that I could do that was because I was in Connecticut and it wasn't just, you know, as, as noisy a little bit. Cause I grew up in the city. I didn't grow up in like the country or whatever, but the mm. opening of the way personally for me is a way to every single morning connect to myself, connect to the divine within me, connect to the divine that's out of me, the, the divine itself. And then also to look at other manifestations of the divine, like all of the plants that I have, when I see people walk in their dogs and you see the dogs and also when I burn my incense and I can see the wind and just, it is so beautiful when you really do it, you learn it, you take your time with it, you don't rush it. And it's a part of your morning routine. I do my offerings to the ancestors, I, you know, my ancestral ancestor to my father. And it's just a part of my morning and it helps to start fresh and anew. If the opening oh, of the way is, is not a part of your morning routine, not a part of how you greet the day, how you greet the divine, you should give it a try. Like really and truly, it, it does make a difference, not only for your day, but in your spirit and in your soul and literally and truly how you're able to see the divine throughout your day. You can oh, do my it. Sister, may I say this before I go? Absolutely. I want to I thank you for Cash App. Many people don't think that Baba Heru needs cash. <laughs> but I would say this. I work for a living. And I work very hard to bring, to access the divine, the divine energy to create beauty for our people to wear on their fingers, wedding bands, engagement rings, to wear around their necks here. I'm wearing, I'm wearing kepara. This is done with um, with both silver and the sun. The Ra is in gold. Look what I put on the back. I put the Ankh. Because Kepara represents the resurrection of your life. So you can have the resurrection and the life in one emblem. Okay? Notice, I'm wearing the Jinyame, the omnipotence of the divine coming out of Ghana. A, a Dinkra symbology. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, notice, I don't know if you can see this close up, but I'm also wearing this ring of the Netaru, the, the Mesuheru, the same, the same heads that you saw on the Mesuheru and the Canopic jaws are on this ring. And each one is taking up a very, the, the different part of a pyramid that I've created to, um, to show our brothers and sisters that you can wear the opening of the way on your finger to be reminded. Raise your hand up, Baba. A little bit oh, higher. Let me let me move it over. There you go. It's the baby finger. Yep. Mm -hmm. there, oh, there you go. There it is, right there. There it is. I know. Look at. I got a black diamond at the um, at the ceiling at the um, on the top of the pyramid. People okay. talk about drip. Baba has the best drip, y'all. Like go. Oh my goodness. If you've not been to the studio of Pata, you're missing out. You gotta go and see it. The space tell, is fine. That's right. And go to studiopata.com and, and check out the um the, the designs there. And also you can friend me on um on Instagram. And every so often I do a little rant on um on Facebook. I do write sometimes on Facebook, but I know our people don't like to read, they like to look at the movies. And so they, they they're leaving they're leaving Facebook to go to Instagram because there you will find all kind of movies and all kind of little shorts, which is a great way to spread the word. So I want to thank our um, cousins for the internet, okay? Because it's a divine instrument that allows you to capture 
the attention of thousands of people like that. I remember sometimes I used to have to get on a plane, travel distances to give a lecture that sometimes only 10 people would show up for. Okay. Nowadays, I can sit in the comfort of, 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 of my studio and I can speak to thousands of people. I was the other day on Brother Rich's show, the um, Black Magic 363, and, um, and I spoke to about 50 some odd thousand people. So again, and here at, at Hapi, here in this, in, in, in the shrine of my art, and also in, in, the, um, in the platform of Hapi, you must grow this shrine. And to yoga girls sitting there, <laughs> <laughs> their beloved sister Sashat, I'm telling you, she's so devoted. <laughs> and that's what one of the things you've got to learn about this legacy. It involves work. It's a divine work. And I know it takes a lot for her to sometimes get herself ready to do this every single Tuesday. But this is the kind of devotion that we invite. This is the kind of devotion that she is an example of. And Jamar and all the brothers and sisters who come on Tuesday talk. This is the kind of devotion it takes to spread this legacy worldwide. That's the reason why there are many people looking at this right today from South Africa. Many people in Ghana are watching this right now. People in the Virgin Islands, people in, in the West Indies are looking at this right now. You know, today I got a call from a, a, a Bobo Shanti Rasta who wants me to come on his uh, platform to speak about the legacy. Okay. So once again, my beloved sisters and brothers, support the shrine of Ma'at in Harlem. Support the work that's being done there to raise brothers and sisters to become the Abu and Abutu, what they call priests and priestesses of this divine legacy. Support this work with all of your heart, with all of your ab, which is your heart, your ib, your ka, your double, your ethereal body, your ba, your divine spirit, your shekem, your vital force and your vital power of attraction. Use all these forces to serve the desire of your ancestors to live forever. Unk herahe, live forever. Dwaun tera. Dwaun tera, Baba. Dwaun tera. It is always a pleasure. We always learn so much. You've got your personality and energy at times is definitely youthful and spontaneous and makes you giggle <laughs> a little bit. Who we'll said I'm not, I'm not youthful, period? <laughs> we live forever, remember? We certainly do. We certainly do. I want to say thank you so much for coming on. Everybody yeah. always loves it when they know that you're coming on to the show. And it's just such, it's such a pleasure to be able to, like you were saying, because of the internet, we, can, right. <laughs> we can be here forever. When this airs again and again and again and again, here we are. We get to spend time with our beloved Baba. So, you know, on behalf of, of myself and the Shrine of my Maat and those of us in this legacy, we murmur you so much and, you and so do much. off for all that you've done. You've, you've given your life. You've given your life to this so that a little pro-Black girl at prep school in Connecticut who was sick of being one of 10 could find something that she was looking for. A lot of people, oh, yeah. you know, are so grateful for the Shrine of Ma'at. They're grateful for Tuesday Talk. They're grateful for, you know, when Jamar goes live. A lot oh. of that has to do- Is Jamar he, something else? <laughs> he is, he is. And, he really and a tangent is. on Jamar, I'll be like, yo, Jamar, can you do? And then it doesn't matter what, goes after that if he could do it he does it for me and i appreciate jamar as my brother and 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 he's there for me in a lot of ways sean he helps me out a lot with the tech too so um you know let I'm, me give I'm, a shout out to my great assistants here i'm talking about okay. sakara the one who's named yes. after that eternal city in kemet <laughs> that's right that's <laughs> because right because i'm i'm all thumbs when it comes to setting this stuff up and she keeps me she keeps me in focus Mm -hmm. You know, and and um, and also my time, you know, and getting ready to do this work. Without her, I don't know how I would uh, be able to even negotiate 
these fancy buttons that you guys have here? <laughs> well, you know, that's because she was birthed from your rib, Baba. Uh, I'm joking. That was, good, huh? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's good to see, like, also when you go to the studio of Bataille, you get to see the... Um, the divine feminine and the divine masculine working together when you see Sakara and, mm -hmm. and Baba Haru working, just being together, just in the same space, could be doing other things, but the energy is there. And it's Good just, it's place. just really, really amazing. The feeling and the energy that you get, but I really do want to say thank you. Do I from the bot, like words can't express how I know how I feel how I'm interviewing people for initiation and the gratitude that they have to be able to hear the message um, from Jabari and Ascension from um, Rasanku Kepper with communion uh, mm. during communion, just full for that. And, 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 and when you keep going a little bit deeper, the, the source, <coughs> excuse me, or very close to the source is you. And Ooh. when you don't live in New York City or you don't live in Los Angeles or you don't live in a majority black space like how I was raised, it's even more critical to be able to access that. So without you fighting, not physically fighting, but rebuffing people who thought you were crazy mm. and really <laughs> having carrying your aunt when you were on the beat and doing it in a way where you were a peace officer, really just fighting against the grain is the reason why I'm here on Tuesday Talk. It's yeah, the reason right. It's the reason that I was able to mourn the, the losing my aunt in a way that resonated with me personally when I knew I was sick of the church and didn't want to have anything to do with it. And it was very prominent when my cousin died, then my father, I mean, then my aunt, then I watched my father die for a year and then he died. That, that type of stuff really hit home for me and mm. i know that it hits home for a lot of people i've interviewed everybody except for the hemstenu who's come through the shrine of my i have interviewed them and i have heard people be grateful for this legacy and so on behalf of all of them all of mm. me all the black people who knew they weren't crazy i just want to say do i do i for mm. making this possible for us just from mm -hmm. the bottom of my heart I wouldn't. I would be remiss if uh, we mentioned Jabbar. We got to go with Anika also. <laughs> they go together. We mentioned um, Sanku Keper, who the the, the Hemnetter of the Temple of Anu. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget Embara. That's right. The one oh who stands be, sits before oh, Ra. I'm sorry, and I she was on. She was on this past Sunday. You know, I can listen to these two all day long. And when Jabari comes on, they call him the. Uh, they call uh, Jabari. The, May, the Floyd Mayweather of consciousness. Of the <laughs> you know, space. when he was in my class about 20 some odd years ago, I didn't know that he was such a pit bull of this legacy, but oh my gosh, he is something else. And um, he's well-schooled. And people, people say I'm his teacher, no, I'm one of his teachers. Jabari was into African culture long before he met me. That's he went right. through the Asara Set Society, another great um, cultural um, uh, resource that we have throughout the world. They have chapters throughout this world. Mm -hmm. The Saraset Society and the Ratwin Efra Man, who is such a great teacher of our legacy. And let me not forget uh, my brother and sister, Dr. Chinzera and brother Kara Kerishere Paru in, in St. Croix. Okay, and um, I can name so many names that uh, have embraced this legacy and are moving it forward for the benefit of our people. I need to say one word, one last thing to our beloved Christians, brothers and sisters. I know some of us who come into this legacy beat upon you, but I will tell you this, that it's an honor to know that we are claiming the culture of the people who spared the wrath of your savior, Yeshua, in his true um, Aramaic name, from the wrath of Herod, according to the story in the Bible, when the the Herod is seeking to slay the firstborn of Israel. His mother and father brought your savior into Kemet to fulfill the prophecy that out of Egypt have I called my son. Of course, they weren't using the word Egypt at the time. That's a foreign word. Out of Kemet have I called my son. Out of Smaikawi have, uh, have we called our S-U-N, Ra. I just needed to say that little bit right there. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Duan, thank you again, uh, Baba. And yeah. Baba will be back during the rest of this season. I have some, we're working on some some good stuff. So you're going to see Baba a few more times because he You're is so sneaky. You're trying to, oh, okay. I'll let it go. <laughs> <coughs> Baba, I'm coming out. When, when you call, I'll be more than happy to, to share what I can. Right. Absolutely. So I want to thank, I want to thank the people who gave me some donations. I saw the, the, um, the, the cash app donations come through. I hope that we were just as, just as, and more so generous with Baba, um, with the donations to his cash app. And whenever you, <coughs> excuse me, have an opportunity throughout the week or whenever he crosses your mind, it's Baba Haru. That's his cash app. B as a boy, A-A-B-A-H-E-R-U, Baba Haru, okay? So again, thank you so much for supporting Tuesday Talk. It is certainly something that I look forward to every week. And, you know, I get to meet a whole lot of people and learn a lot of good stuff. We have all of this stuff on the replay. If ever you want to, my suggestion is always just to watch and be a part and then go back and grab your notebook and take down your notes so that it's something that you can learn and apply. So thank you so much, Dua and do on tour, and I will see you next Tuesday. Shema ma'at. Shema ma'at. Shema ma'at.